Elon Musk stated, Giga Texas is currently one of Tesla's largest and most important factories. However, have you ever thought that this giant factory will have to stop production? This worst case scenario could happen at any time if one of Tesla's most important partners, battery maker Panasonic, had a serious problem in the US. So, why is Panasonic so important to the Giga Texas factory? And what problems might Panasonic face in the United States? Only one way to find out, and that's in today's episode of Tesla Car World. But before we start the video, please show your support by subscribing to our channel and ringing the bell so you won't miss any of our interesting videos in the future. Now let's get started on today's content. Panasonic supplied ever greater quantities of lithium ion cells for Tesla vehicles such as the Model S and X. Panasonic also has worked with Tesla at its Gigafactory in Sparks, Nevada. Panasonic has a total manufacturing capacity of cylindrical lithium ion cells of 38 to 39 gigawatt hours per year in the form of the 2170 type cells at the Tesla Giga Nevada plant. Moreover, Panasonic will make the 4680 batteries at a plant in Wakayama, Japan with an output of around 10 gigawatt hours a year, equivalent to around 150,000 Tesla electric vehicles. Therefore, if Panasonic encounters any problems, hundreds of thousands of Model Y vehicles produced in Giga Texas will not be shipped because Panasonic suddenly stops supplying the new 4680 batteries. Currently, while the demand for battery production for the Giga Texas factory is increasing rapidly, the battery supplier for Tesla, Panasonic, is still struggling to choose a new location for the 4680 battery factory in the US. A Panasonic executive revealed that the Japanese corporation is looking at several locations for the multi-billion dollar factory, maybe a factory in California. The new facility could start operating as soon as 2024. However, this idea of building a battery factory in California does not seem to work because of Elon Musk's earlier warning. Because there are so many regulatory agencies and so many litigators in California that want to stop you from doing anything, that even if you're the governor of the, of the state, you cannot get it done. Therefore, if Panasonic is still lagging behind on the construction of their battery manufacturing facility in the United States, this will have unpredictable consequences for the battery supply chain for Tesla's factory because the demand for EVs will increase sharply in the near future. Not only that, according to a recent report, Panasonic, along with other battery manufacturers, will also face a shortage of critical raw materials such as lithium needed to produce electric vehicle battery cells within the next four years. Sam Jaffe, vice president of battery solutions at eSource, a research firm in Boulder, Colorado, said, the tsunami of demand is coming. I don't think the battery industry is ready for it. There is a literal shortage of lithium and there's going to be an even sharper shortage of lithium. You cannot make the batteries if you don't mine the lithium. Though battery industry executives and government leaders agree more needs to be done to source raw materials, eSource, a data science firm, says there's still a surprisingly low number of mining projects. Accordingly, eSource shared, with the price of lithium having risen nearly 900% in the last 18 months, we had assumed the capital markets would unleash the floodgates to establish dozens of new lithium mining projects. Instead, the investments have come in dribs and drabs, with most of it originating from China for the Chinese supply chain. Moreover, the lithium-ion battery supply chain ranking for 2020 points to China controlling 80% of the world's raw material refining. It's clear that China wants to keep a monopoly on exporting refined lithium raw materials to battery manufacturers. In addition, now Panasonic is also carrying a huge debt. According to Panasonic's most recent financial results, the company's long-term debt as of May of 2022 is more than $9 million, which is nearly 1.4 times as high as last year's debt of $6.6 .6 million, and is nearly three times as high as Tesla's long-term debt. Assuming that if a global economic crisis happens, Panasonic still allows this debt to grow sharply, and it is unable to pay which will likely lead to the worst possible scenario, bankruptcy, 
At that time, Tesla's EV production will also be seriously disrupted because Panasonic does not have enough financial resources to produce and supply batteries anymore. So, how can Panasonic reduce its current long-term debt? Panasonic is not only in the business of manufacturing EV batteries. They are also involved in many other fields, such as housing equipment devices, electronic materials, automation control components, media entertainment, and so on. This will help them diversify their revenue and increase the company's profits from different products without being too dependent on battery production. This strategy of diversifying revenue streams can also help them pay off their debts gradually. Ultimately, how will Panasonic solve the problems related to battery supply and production costs? Panasonic, Tesla's main battery partner since its earliest days, plans to use recycled materials supplied by the startup Redwood Materials. Panasonic said at the 2022 CES Tech Trade Show that Redwood Materials would start supplying it with copper foil produced from recycled materials, a critical component of the anode side of the battery cell. Redwood Materials will begin producing the copper foil in the first half of the year. The copper foil will then head to Panasonic, where it will be used in cell production by the end of the year. The announcement marks Panasonic's push to use more recycled materials, which in turn helps it reduce the amount of newly mined raw materials it must rely on. It also shows how Redwood Materials continues to grow its business. Alan Swan, president of Panasonic Energy North America said, Redwood is creating a circular supply chain for electric vehicles and clean energy products here in the United States, making them more sustainable and driving down the cost of batteries. Redwood was founded in 2017 by a former Tesla co-founder and chief technology officer. Redwood is moving quickly to become a leading supplier of recycled metals and materials that it's recovering from used batteries, battery scrap, and electronics. This company processes the discarded goods such as cell phone batteries, laptop computers, power tools, power banks, and so on, extracting materials like cobalt, nickel, and lithium that are typically mined and then supplies those back to Panasonic and other customers. And with that, today's episode has come to an end. We sincerely thank you for watching today's video and for all of your support of our channel, Tesla Car World. As always, if you enjoyed our episode, please leave a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs. And be sure to leave a comment down below to tell us what you thought about today's content. Once again, we thank you so much. From all of us here, we hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.